We are a data center integrator or value added reseller. We believe that we're very good at compute, storage, business continuity, disaster recovery, backups, application delivery, and of course security. Uh, we have a heavy engineering focus. We maintain a best of breed product mentality. That means that we don't just try to sell five competing products and hope that uh, I hope that one intrigues you, right? We go out and we do the due diligence, we do the market research, and we find that transformative product that we think delivers the most value for our customers. We get trained up so we can represent it, we can do the installs, we can take support calls. And of course, we've always thought that that's a better mousetrap for our customers. So how does that relate to security and why did we choose Arctic Wolf? Well, as I've mentioned before, Eagle's been around for almost 40 years and we've been helping customers with backups and business continuity in general for some time. And it was really that experience that, that got us into helping customers with uh, their security posture. And what I mean by that is starting about five years ago, we saw a truly alarming uptick in the amount of data restores we were helping customers with that directly related to security events. You know, before that, the majority of events were caused by human error or some sort of corruption. But all of a sudden now, the uh, vast majority of our calls were actually due to intruders or ransomware. And we were seeing the pain that our customers were going through. So to better help our customers, we began to invest a lot of our time and our own resources into helping uh, find solutions that would help our customers prevent and respond to those security incidents. And it was through that research and that due diligence that we settled, I have to admit pretty quickly, on Arctic Wolf. I don't want to steal Brian and Dave's thunder uh, much longer, but I just wanted to add that, that Arctic Wolf's focus on customer service really closely aligns with uh, Eagle's customer service and that their model offered really significant value and, and importantly, really importantly, didn't require a dedicated security team. So in a nutshell, we felt that that was a solution that was transformative and it was something that we could really help our customers with. So I think I, I think it is going to be a great partnership so far. It's going to continue to grow. Arctic Wolf has been a great addition to, to our portfolio. I'm, I'm known as the backup guy. I really like that piece of our business. Brian has really taken over the storage side and, and now leads the, the pre-sales engineering team. But backups are still near and dear to me. And we found that that was you know, a great line of defense. We'll talk more about that later, but the partnership with Arctic Wolf really extends what we can do for our customers. Uh, I started Arctic Wolf, my co-founder, Kim, back in 2012. The, the real genesis uh, of what motivated us is uh, seeing what we thought was a problem, but what would be a growing problem. And specifically, companies investing in new tools, new capabilities uh, to protect themselves, yet they still get breached. And so we kind of just kept seeing this underlying trend. Okay, here's this new tech, fill in the blank, whatever you want. Uh, it, but okay, now I still get breached and I still get breached and I still get breached. And what we started to realize is that uh, organizations, and I'm, not, and I'm not saying that those sorts of things aren't relevant, that you need to add new capabilities to protect your network and your infrastructure. But fundamentally, it's not enough. That no matter what tech you use, that whether it's by human behavior, hackers, creativity, social engineering, the list goes on, people eventually find a way to circumvent those uh, protections. And so what you have to put in place is uh, some monitoring capability. And that monitoring, it, you, you know, it's easy to say on the surface, but uh, in its implementation is a lot of details. So the thought was, let's build a company that addresses this fundamental problem, which is the lack of security operations, or, or maybe not lack, but maybe weak security operations. And we wanted to build a company that would complement what customers had bought in the way of products to let them know how their infrastructure is working. Is it working appropriately? Is it working properly? When do they have failures in that infrastructure and in protecting themselves? So we really view ourselves as the innovator and the leader in security operations as a service. And uh, looking, we, we started with an idea that we wanted to build our own tech stack. We wanted to build something that would allow us to grow and scale. Uh, also would allow us to control how we evolved and uh, delivered new capabilities. So we're not going to point fingers at other vendors. We don't really, we, we don't depend on other parties for what we're doing. And, and so we invest a lot of money and a lot of R&D dollars in the underlying technology. But obviously we deliver it as a service and we do that with our partners, uh, Eagle obviously being uh, one of the great partners that we're working with here. So we, we think there's really a, a missing gap. Uh, we can help companies of pretty much any size uh, be better at security operations and therefore be safer. So uh, with that, we'll go ahead and get to the first question. So what is the biggest challenge the cybersecurity industry faces today? 
Uh, and Brian, if you'd take a run at this first, that'd be great. Sure. Uh, I'm probably a little bit preempted in my uh, earlier comment. Uh, stay at home, like we, with everybody staying at home, everybody working at home, working remotely. Uh, the nature of the way the traffic works in a lot of organizations is dramatically shifted. There's a lot less coming through the corporate infrastructure and more coming from remote desktops, cloud environments, and, and that area. And so we, we've invested, fortunately, we had invested and continue to invest in, in ways that you can manage remote workers. Now it's the point where uh, it's the exception when the workers are centralized. Uh, so it's really remote worker management and the threats. The hackers are really creative. They, they attack what's available. They attack where the money's at. And right now it's in remote workers and remote workforce and cloud. Those, were, those are the ways that people are trying to break into organizations. Excellent. Good answer. Dave, anything you want to add? Yeah, I think that absolutely exists today. I think from my standpoint, maybe a bigger picture would be just, you know, trying to build a defense strategy and, and that being an evolving process and needing to be an evolving process. It's really not about programs anymore or applications. There's no way you can just have a static plan anymore. And expect it to be effective against, you know, to Brian's point, all the different creative and effective attacks that are out there today. Um, they're, they're becoming more aggressive. They're more targeted. Um, they leverage more attack surfaces. COVID has helped that, obviously, in those type of things. Um, they're more concealing. They, they go stealth for a longer period of time. A simple plan just doesn't work anymore. So really the, the challenge is, in my view, is to build a true strategy and process as opposed to just a simple plan. And that's really required for that effective safeguard. Um, security, in my humble opinion, is the new DR plan. You know, we, we must continually think about the what ifs. Uh, we need to think about um, the tools that address the what ifs. And we must continually test to make sure that those what ifs are addressed, if you will. Otherwise, it's going to bite us in the you know what ifs um, if we don't test that right. So, DR and cybersecurity both require attention, and it's a challenge. And I think Brian alluded to this earlier to find that attention or you know those resources within a lot of companies to that it's really required. There's just not enough cycles in people's, uh, you know, workforce today to, to effectively manage that. And that's been a huge, huge challenge. Um, what is, and we touched on this a little bit, but I think it's worth revisiting. What does the cybersecurity industry look like after COVID-19 and how is it different? And as you can see on the screen, this is a mouthful, but um, a lot of it has to do with the fact that we are trying to protect this this dispersed workforce and these, these network perimeters are just rapidly evolving. So maybe Dave, you could start with this. Um, what, what does it look like to you as a business owner? Uh, how, how has this evolved? Well, I mean, uh, and again, Brian touched on this and kind of the opening of what, what, why Arctic Wolf is so relevant today, but the obvious thing with COVID is the, the shift of workforce to the home environment uh, and that increased attack surface. So teams working from home, you know, what does that home device look like or devices? Is that, you know, bring your own device or is that something they took home from work? What are the tools that are installed it to install in that applicate or I'm sorry, on that PC to protect those applications and data sets? What are the home firewall settings? Is that person really even at home when they're working remotely? Um, or are they in some coffee shop someplace practicing social distancing, I'm sure? Um, are they practicing and looking at physical desktop security? Is the device vulnerable to theft or, um, you know, some type of other compromise? Um, and are the data sets being protected? You know, the data sets, depending on network connectivity, we see a lot of intellectual property moving from the core file servers out to the edge just for accessibility and, and speed. And now is that data set being protected? So all of those things come into play. Um, we do a great job of helping people uh, with products like VPN and BDI workspaces and, of course, of course my favorite, data protection. Um, but it, it does definitely change the landscape. All right. Dave, you're killing it today. Good job. Thanks, boss. <laughs> so, uh, Brian, I, I, how does how does your solution, how has it evolved or changed, or how do, how do, you, do you speak to it differently now that we've got this, this post-COVID-19 reality? I mean, we, you can't like 
not recognize the current environment and everybody working from home and where the threats have, have shifted. I think it, it does illustrate one of the big value propositions that we try to bring to the table is we, we bear, Arctic Wolf bears a large responsibility with evolving our capability to reflect what is the threat dynamic going on in all our different customers' environments. So be it healthcare, be it financial, be it manufacturing, they, different things affect different organizations. And as well, obviously with coronavirus, you know, the remote workforce dynamic, the threats are more coming from the endpoints and from cloud environments. So it doesn't mean that the threats have gone away in the other areas as well. So there's not like it's a flip a switch and the light goes off in one room and goes on in another room. It's, uh, you know, we take a big responsibility of evolving our capability to reflect the dynamics of the landscape. And, you know, I, I'd say that the biggest thing, the biggest thing I've seen is um, a lot of companies, I think, have recognized the, the threats and the growth of them, and we're planning on, on buying and building out some of their own capabilities. They've run square into uh, the ability to recruit security talent, and that kind of remains as a core problem. And so we've seen a lot of DIY do-it-yourself where they might have been building their own capability, maybe buying a SIM, maybe buying some other functional tools, some threat hunting tools, and you can actually use us as a service and eliminate purchasing those things or get more effective use out of them. Uh, one of the big parts of what we want to do in our service is we adapt to the way the organization works, what, what level, the number of people they have, the capabilities of those individuals, uh, the risk for the organization, what tools they do or do not have. And so I, I'd say the big trend that we've seen along with COVID is, is companies not as willing to go off and do big capital purchases in some cases, because they just don't have the talent to go put them in place or doing that remotely is a little more challenging than they might like. Excellent. Uh, why don't we just move on to the next question? Here we go. Um, I, th I think both of you gentlemen might be able to answer this a little differently. Um, so wh what are the emerging trends and threats in cybersecurity and how do you stay one step ahead of these, these very evolved uh, hackers and organizations? Uh, Brian, why don't you start with this, if you don't mind? Sure. Uh, quite a few. Uh, we've, we've talked about coronavirus, which I guess you could say is a trend that we're living right now. Uh, I would say more fundamentally, uh, organizations are moving to the cloud uh, is probably one of the biggest trends in a variety of different ways. And so uh, how do you secure and know that what's operating in a secure manner up in that environment is a, is a big challenge for a lot of organizations. Uh, we're definitely seeing a growth in um, uh, tools and hacker groups that uh, are motivated. You know, we've seen the traditional nation state. We're seeing a lot more what I would call kind of, uh, you know, people that have a, say, a strong opinion, what we would call a hacktivist. Uh, whether, it doesn't matter whether you're conservative or liberal, they're hacktivists of one nature or another. They, and, and so we just saw uh, in the news the disclosure of all those different police department data published uh, on a, a number of things, you know, and I, I personally found it quite appalling that somebody would do something like that. But uh, on top of that, you're seeing that kind of growth of hacktivists, you're seeing uh, a lot of things going on in this area. I, to me, they're all a part of the trend that, uh, uh, look, business is going, you know, on the internet and, you know, that's where the money is and guess what, that's where the thieves are. And so they, we put a better name on them, we can call them hackers, but they're still trying to do ugly things. And so, you know, we want to work to handle it. And the trend is, I think, is that our entire world is going online and we've got to reflect and build capabilities to defend ourselves. doesn't matter whether you're a small company, big company, medium company, it's the same problems. You have the same challenges and there's, there's you know, you need to invest in some of those things to make it work. That kind of goes counter to, although we are seeing a slow trend of uh, getting more security talent, more capability, uh, in this area, but that has also been a challenge for a lot of organizations is finding talent and retaining it, uh, which is one of the really bigger things that we bring to the table um, is that you can have the talent that you want, but as you grow and need to get your security better, you can leverage us and, and you know, redeploy or, or augment what your team is doing right now. Excellent. Uh, Dave, is there anything you want to add? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would agree. I would agree. This We probably have a little different approach as being a, a value-added partner for for folks like Arctic Wolf, but um, our approach is really to seek out the partnerships of like Arctic Wolf and Arctic Wolf being one of those first relationships that we, that we're building on and leveraging their services for our client base. It's not something that we can tool up fast enough and to be effective, nor should we really even try to be honest. We should leverage some of the smart guys out there like Brian to, 
that have, um, you know, invested the time, built some great tools, and have some of those great strategy and processes already in place. So from Eagle standpoint, our approach to, to this, for lack of a better term, maybe evolution or this, this new focus, because Brian's exactly right, these are common thieves that are out there trying to steal our data. We have to protect it in some way, shape or form. Ours is really to build, build those relationships and find that product set. We're even going as far as sipping our own champagne, so to speak, and, and we are a customer of Arctic Wolf as well, and, and a proud customer. They, they've already saved us uh, in one attack, and, and we'll talk more about that maybe a little bit later. But we continue to look for, you know, things that meet our tagline, you know, people making technology easy. We have to find highly effective and affordable, easy to use tools. In my humble opinion, if we don't continue down that path, those tools become, you know, ineffective, underutilized, and so forth. So we continue to focus on our strength, and that is to find great products for our customers. So kind of a different take on, on that question, but uh, that's, that's the process we're going through right now. Awesome. So let's move on to the next question. There we go. So, um, Dave, I'll let you take a run at this first. You didn't talk enough just now. Okay. Um, how, how do you leverage uh, your subject subject matter expertise inside Eagle to help create ideas that, that help our customers? Well, as I mentioned before, we're, we are starting to invest more into this, this, what I would consider a vertical market for us. Um, so we're investing in, in that cybersecurity space. Um, Part of that is investing in technology focused, dedicated team members for Eagle uh, to help build those strategies and processes, um, um, getting those ideas to our clients. Um, we don't really want to build the product. We want to help build the strategy around it. And that's, um, you know, we're trying to build uh, more intellectual property around that. Uh, we want to be that first line of, of defense. I mean, the Arctic Wolves of the world, Brian's built a great solution to understand when an attack is happening. And I think in partnership with what we already have in place, we have great methods and resources within our company um, to basically recover that data, you know, to, to get back online quicker and better. We've been doing backups. We've been doing primary storage strategies for a long, long time. And I think those products are very, very complementary. Now what we have to do is educate our team and then get that information out to our customers. Hey, if there's an attack, call us. And these are the steps that we will help you put into place um, to, to get your, your data back online, get your company back functioning. Excellent. Brian, did you have anything you wanted to add on this question? Very short. Um, there, there are two aspects when you think about us. One is the, the, work that we do in the underlying technology stack. Uh, and that's a very critical component, but uh, we're unique in the sense that we, we do own our technology stack. But in addition to that, we also have the security talent that's actually doing the review of the data. We're trying to combine the best of people and technology uh, because you can't, you, it's not one or the other, it's yes to both in, in what you're doing. And concierge security, when we see something, we see a problem on one customer, we, we look and say, that's applicable to a lot of people, let's do something. When we see something that's one off and uh, as a problem, we realize, oh, there's ways we can enhance our technology platform. So um, there, I would say we are a living, evolving entity that's constantly having to reinvent ourselves every day, every week, every month. Yeah. And I'd just add to that too. I mean, I think Brian, you touched on this earlier, but Arctic Wolf is there because there's no way to stop these attacks, right? They're going to get into your network. It's just how you identify it. I, I use the analogy, um, if, if anybody is from the Kansas area, there's, there's no such thing as a house in Kansas that, without termites. It's either already had termites or it's about to get them, but there's no such thing as preventing termites in a house. And, and I think what we continually try to work is to try to minimize the risk once an attack happens. And and the team has done a great job of, of addressing that so far, uh, so far. And I think Arctic Wolf is again going to be another arrow on our quiver to help uh, help us move move that ball even further forward. All right. So let's move on to the next question. Um, 
Brian, you can give a, a take a run at this. Uh, what is security operations and why should companies care? So I hate stats sometimes, but they sometimes serve a very specific purpose. So in over 70% of the customers that we go in, we find an active hacker uh, breach that exists inside that organization within a matter of the first 48 hours. Uh, it's basically pointing to, and, and these were companies that they had firewalls, they had endpoint, they had antivirus, they had, the list went on. They had all these different things to protect themselves. And I think as Dave highlighted, um, those are good to have. I'm not proposing that you don't have them. Uh, they're necessary. They're not enough. That you're, If you don't know that you've been breached in the last year, you were breached and you just didn't know. So it's the thing about it is if you monitor very thoroughly and you track what's going on, you can remediate breaches where they're not really damaging. So that's a, it's kind of a hard dynamic to understand, but I, it's, it's, that's where security operation steps in is it, it takes that infrastructure you put in place and gets the maximum leverage out of it and knows that you've got an operational model that's going to keep you safe and secure over time. Excellent. Dave, anything you want to add, sir? Sure. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, I, again, I come back to it, strategy and process are key. Um, security operations or 24 by 7 monitoring, whatever you want to call it, it's key to the success of any solution. Uh, there must be tools in place. There must be consistent and constant monitoring of those tools. Uh, time is critical, right? The longer one of these attackers is within your network, the more damage they can do, the more easily they can conceal themselves and so forth. So early detection is key. Um, dedicated teams uh, that continually monitor um, are, are very, very important to keeping the required SLAs um, after the attack, right? So can you recover without tools like Arctic Wolf? Um, absolutely, that's, that's not really the question. That's what we've been doing for a living for, um, for years now. Um, but, you know, slow recovery also offers its own risk to the business and that a risk sometimes isn't acceptable. So risk reward costs are always a balancing act. And for Eagle, early detection uh, and the constant monitoring our solution with solutions like Arctic Wolf, um, that, that's a great value in the balancing act, in my humble opinion. So we, we have to have that, that monitoring, otherwise it, it just gets out of control. I mean, today people cannot be without access to their applications for weeks and a full recovery from a, a large attack could take that long. So we, we have to have those, that monitoring in place. So very key. Excellent. So we'll get to the next question now. And this is specifically a question for Brian. Uh, Brian, what is an Arctic Wolf concierge security expert and why is that personal approach to cybersecurity so important? When you think, you, know, you look at every company, you look at every organization, what matters? What data, what server, what infrastructure, what people? And it's different. Uh, it's an example of, and what we do with concierge security is each customer gets assigned a, a team. It's a paired individual a set of individuals that get to be intimate with the customer. They get to understand them. They understand what the risks are. They understand what that organization cares about. And they're responsible for configuring our infrastructure to be optimized for that customer. Everybody's different. Everybody's unique. And, and they're, you know, we invest a lot in the technology to help our concierge engineers do that. But fundamentally in the end, um, it's our job, that concierge engineer's job to get the best use out of our infrastructure for that customer. And that's developed through intimacy. Uh, we see as a matter of course that many of our customers don't know Arctic Wolf. You know, they, they know Sam or Sally or, or Harry, their concierge engineer, because that's the face of what we do. And, and our concierge security engineers, um, you know, develop that understanding, get intimate with the customers, but more importantly, make sure that the customers are getting the best leverage out of what we're doing for them. So concierge security broadly defined is really building a security operations capability that's customized to you as a customer and what, what you require. Um, and knowing that no matter what we even do out of the gate, that you're probably going to change your mind six months from now, or you're going to add something new or something's going to shift. And we're, you know, we don't have change orders. We don't, you know, if you go from one firewall vendor to another firewall vendor or one AV to another or whatever, uh, we're going to evolve and adapt uh, or we're going to evolve as the industry adapts. And those are all elements of the concierge security story. The idea is a partner 
that is loyal to you uh, as an organization, makes sure that you're getting everything you can out of it and knows and defends and, and, and represents what, what you're looking for out of the service. Yeah, and I mean, I, I know I'm the moderator, but I just have to add here, this is a huge differentiator for you guys. When we, when we did our due diligence, we ran into far too many tools that were well-respected, but created a lot of noise that were really hard to interpret. And you called support when the tool wasn't working, not to help you interpret what you were seeing, right? And and we felt like that the onus was on the customer to be a security expert at that point, even with these expensive tools they were buying. So, um your your concierge security experts uh, and once again we're we're sh sipping our own champagne as Dave likes to say uh, we've got to experience that firsthand and it, it's impactful and it's different. Yeah, I would echo what Brian says. That's that's probably the biggest factor why we selected Arctic Wolf as a partner. I mean, um, four decades of building Eagle up and it's all really been about that high touch personal interaction. Everybody is different. Everybody has different business needs and networks and et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, it's a Huge kudos to you, Brian, for, for building that type of uh, model. I we really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. We can, we can tie it back. Another Brian. <laughs> <laughs> we can tie it back. I know Leslie's not talked yet, but uh, when I think of a great sommelier, you know, they're sitting and as they talk to you, a lot of times they just ask questions. What do you like? You know, what kind of food are you eating? How does it fit? What's your palate? You know, and, and, and build something that's for you because, you know, everybody has a different taste in wine and, and I think one of the things about concierge security is it's very similar to that. It's making, yeah. making it unique to you. Given the tools and capabilities, you still got to have good wine in the end. That doesn't, can't take away from that. But, you know, what you might like and what might be relevant to you is, is very much a part of that. Yeah. Excellent. All right, Dave, this is your time to shine. I've got a question specifically for you. Uh, what, what is Eagle Watch and how does that uh, service a big benefit for Eagle's customers? No pressure here. No pressure. I know. So, <laughs> no, I would equate it very similar to, to, to the concierge service to, from Arctic Wolf. We, we've done Eagle Watch in some form or fashion probably for over a decade now. It's really um, the key to prevention of data losses is, is true oversight. And we feel like this is a great add-on service for our customers where, where our engineers are you know, kind of overseeing the log files, making sure that the reports are clean and everything is working. And we continue to build on that application. You know, we're constantly having meetings about how to make that product better, um, more meaningful to our customers. And we will continue to do that. That's a huge offering for us. From, from our standpoint as to why we do it, um, you know, it's just key to great, uh, a great line of defense for, anything that goes on in your data center today, not just cybersecurity, but, you know, accidental data loss, hardware loss, facility loss, and so forth. If we don't have that data protected, you know, the strategy falls apart very quickly. So we put together Eagle Watch in an effort to, to help our customers with some of that oversight and, you know, keeping in mind, it, Again, everybody's heard me say this about a million times. It's really all about the data and meaningful access to that data. And, you know, that, that Eagle Watch, that, that constant monitoring from both us and our partners in their, in their different uh, uh, verticals is huge. So that's why we put that together for our customers. Great. All right. Next question. So it's not refreshing on the screen, but I'll go ahead and get to it. Um, I got to be honest, you know, when we started this journey to Eagle uh, quite a few years ago, but I was a little put off by how many different tools there were that aided in security and, and the overlapping and whether I needed to have all of them. So a good example is antivirus, firewalls, multi-factor authentication. You know, there's just a lot of tools to choose from. So Brian, this is a question for you. What is your philosophy on working with all of these other disparate tools that exist? I, I, we started with a premise that there's so many different product capabilities that we were gonna, as part of our solution, going to need to be able to ingest and deal with pretty much what the customers have in place. So we, we've, you know, over 1500 customers in our history, we've had two customers that we brought on board and then saw how they were configured and said, we can't help you. You're so, poorly configured, like if you don't fix that, we can't do it. Other than that, we adapt, you know, 
every organization has a different view about what's their level of risk, you know, how much they're concerned about their operation. So a particular vendor's firewall, a particular vendor's uh, endpoint protection. Uh, I would say that in general, um, a company needs a good firewall, needs a good web filtering product, needs a good email filtering product um, as a baseline. Without any one of those three, you're, you're probably woefully deficient. Uh, every other thing you add past that, uh, it depends a lot about how well you configure and manage it. So it's, uh, you can buy products, but not deploy them in, in, in the right manner and you can run into a lot of challenges. But our view is, is we'll accept pretty much whatever infrastructure you have in place and can make it work. Uh, that same thing is applicable, I think, to the nature of the organization. Some people uh, that we work with have very little security expertise. Some are very deep in security and they have uh, really critical, uh, even national security dynamics that are important to them. And part of our service capability is not just adapting to the tools and the infrastructure you have in place, but to the capabilities of the organization. And as it changes over time, how, how you want to do it. So uh, our philosophy has been to really be accepting of pretty much what customers have in place and help them as best they can in their journey to improve their, their security profile and reduce their risk. Awesome, great answer. All right, so we have one more, uh, what I will affectionately refer to as a canned question. I'm happy to say we do have some Q&A coming in, so we'll get to that next. Um, the question is, is that it, if you were an incoming CISO, uh, what would be the first thing you would do? And just for uh, completeness, uh, a CISO is a Chief Information Security Officer. Um, Brian, you wanna take a run at that? Yeah, I, you know, first thing I'd do is probably just get a handle on what I have in place. I would say just kind of a high level audit of both people and technology and process to kind of understand what are my big gaps and where do I need to put energy. It, the challenge with being a CISO is the problem never goes away. It, you knock down one risk and another one pops up its head. So uh, what you really start to realize as a CISO is that uh, you know, you need to manage risk against the budget that you have and what you're doing. So you got to really audit and profile what you got in place to figure out what's the next best place to do it. One of the powerful things about uh, what we bring to the table in the process of collecting data, organizing logs and profiling, we help organizations get that better picture of what, the, what they are and then highlight to them, here's the next best way you can reduce your risk in your environment. And so, um, you know, I'll take a self-serving view and say the first thing they should do is just hire us and we can help them do that. <laughs> <laughs> and through your partners at Eagle, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, we appreciate that. So, yeah, I, from my standpoint, keep in mind which soapbox I like to stand on, but uh, is my data protected? Is my data protected? Is my data protected? I mean, that's got to be number one in my view. Uh, when they come into the into that position, they they have to know that that's that safety net that we talked about earlier. So um, once there's an understanding um, of that very critical piece, then we can move on to the prevention, the detection and response in an effort to improve that SLA. As we talked about, can I do this without the tools? I don't think Brian or I, either one are recommending that you do. I mean, there's all kinds of tools out there. Um, we're talking specifically about that prevention and detection with with tools like Arctic Wolf. So from my standpoint, simplicity, it's it's protect the data, you know, through backup and recovery, through snapshots, through replication, et cetera, et cetera. And then comes that prevention of attack. And those are the tools that you hate, but you have to have in place. And that's those firewalls and antiviruses, et cetera. Maybe pen testing would fall into that, um, that category as well for me. And then the, the detection of the attack is really how you prevent this and how you really improve the SLAs in my humble opinion. That's how we get the, the immediate response in place, the resolution or the, the fencing off of the attack, so to speak, uh, the isolation of it so that it doesn't spread and, and impact a, a bigger portion of our business. And then the response to that attack is that removable removal, rebuild and restore uh, piece of the puzzle. So, um, there's, there's a process, the audits are huge as well. It's amazing just in the backup space. And I'm sure, I'm sure this has been, this was an issue when we were onboarding with Arctic Wolf is you really have to do an audit of what you have as well, right? You have to understand not only what, what, what you want to protect with data protection, but then when you push it up to that detection of an attack phase of the process, we have to know what we want to monitor and what we're, what we're monitoring for. 
and fine tune that. To Brian's point, every environment is different. And we found out with ourselves where we have to exclude certain things or include other things. Uh, we, you know, some of our internal applications look like attacks until they fine tune it to our needs. So uh, again, going back to that concierge service, it was critical for us to have success with that. So um, my, my take on it anyway.